Holding the camera steady when you're on a shaky boat or jetty may be tricky. However, this one here isn't shaking at all and the camera is on a solid tripod. So let's use this tutorial to have a quick look at fake camera shake. Camera shake is one of those effects that are available in the effects library from the edit page and it's also available in the fusion tab. And there are pros and cons for both ways. So let me show you an example when I would use it in the edit page and where I go into fusion and then you can uh, judge. So from the open FX section of the effects library you find it under resolve FX transform camera shake and you can just drag and drop these kind of effects uh, and immediately get the effect. So that's definitely the fastest option if you just want to make a whole clip shaky. If you need to change any settings under Inspector, Open FX, you have all the settings of this effect. Now for the camera shake, mostly you need the first two. So motion scale tells you how far the shake should go amplitude wise and speed scale tells you do you want something fast and jittery or do you want to have something um, very slow but still uh, slowly shaking. So the other parameters are some are intuitive so pan tilt rotation tells you do I shake more left right up down rotation you can even shake the zoom I don't think that's a very common scenario and then here shake quality you have uh, parameters that affect how random the shake should look like versus how smooth. So if you put all to zero you get a very predictable uh, repeating motion and with the default you will be mostly fine I think. Blanking handling tells you what to do about the edges when you have a shake. If you don't zoom in then the image moves in and out of the frame and you get these black edges. There may be a few cases where you can um, reflect the edge or use one of these treatments and get away with it. Um, the most common scenario I think is to leave it on black and, and use the zoom. Now you can play with these settings, especially the shake quality. I would say there are more settings than uh, most people can easily control. But if you stick to the first two, you will already get quite decent results and then you can fine tune to your liking. Now, if it's so easy in the edit page, why would I ever go over to Fusion? One reason could be if I do a more complicated composite and use the shake as one part of it. Um, another reason could be if I like to animate the shake. Now, I can animate, of course, inside Resolve. And you have here this curve editor. And if you have animations here, you can uh, change your curve here. But this is a relatively small and not super convenient area. Now in the second example here, let me go directly to Fusion. And here in Fusion, let me get some space. I can add the camera shake. I get the tool from right click, add tool, transform camera shake. That's um, one way, but the one I used now and which I will continue to use in the example is actually from the Resolve FX section. It's this camera shake. So there are two camera shakes. The second one, the one I'm using more, has a few more settings. It's more like an all-in-one tool versus the other one you might still combine with the transform um, and, and manually do a few changes. It doesn't really matter. It's up to a preference. You can use both. Um, so in this one, I want to animate this video. I don't want to shake it so much. I want a very small but very fast shake at the end. Uh, that's too small. Yeah, maybe something like this. And my idea is that when the car drives by, the shake should start. So maybe when the car is really near or at the camera, here I really want to um, spike. So I can just put a keyframe, put another one and put it all the way up to maximum. And then before 
I don't know if I want any shake maybe while it's approaching and before that nothing at all. Now if I want to uh, control this better and really go into animation curves, I have my spline editor in Fusion. Let me enable it and I move the nodes away so I have more space. I select the motion scale, which is the only parameter which is animated. So all parameters that are animated appear here. And if you are lost and don't know where you are, this button is usually the solution. Now I see a ramp here and it goes up to the value number two. I can, um, I can move via the timeline or I can move this handle back and forth. So here it goes up to two, but I made some mistake. It doesn't go down again. So let me in the timeline again, scale to the whole, scale a bit out. So you have the, uh, the scaling parameters. So here, let me set another keyframe, maybe here. I can, can do it directly just by clicking into it and move it down again to the level that I wanted towards the end. Yeah, that's the shake I want at the end. And now these keyframes I can really move around and I can adjust the how, how, how smooth or how strong they are. Actually, the first thing, if you have a regular keyframe, um, I select it and click Shift S if I want it smooth. So Shift S, or you can uh, do right click and have here smooth. This turns an edgy curve directly into a smooth curve, which is what I want so that it slowly smooths out. And probably I want to move it even further here. I have these tangent handles, which can control the curve even further. So if I want it more linear, I make it shorter. If I want it smooth, I made it longer. And the curve goes like um, in a tangent to this handle. The same here. So maybe I want it steeper. I probably want it steep in the beginning so that it very quickly goes down. So here I'm really at, oh, I can make it really steep, uh, really spiky up and then I want it uh, to, to smooth out. I can zoom like in, in all other windows. Yeah, something like this. So you can, can play with this. But here I really have space. I can look at multiple parameters at the same time. I can enable, disable parameters. So this way I still see it, but I can't accidentally change it if I have more than one parameter um, and so on. So these are the things I can do in, in the spline editor. There are lots of other things in the spline editor. You can do repeating curves and periodical stuff and so on. Um, and I'm sure I will uh, go into this editor again in some, some future tutorial. But for this camera shake, I think I'm good for now. Let's see how it looks like. So this is my result. Do it in ResolveFX or do it in Fusion. You can use the best of both worlds and enjoy the outcome. I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. For more, please subscribe and see you around next time.